YouTube, this is Brandy. I had a brother in Christ just comment and he asked me if I could do a video on whether men can have the Jezebel spirit. Yes, they can. <laughs> and I said that really dramatically because um, the Lord actually started teaching me about that, the Ahab spirit, what exactly the Ahab spirit is. Last year through my dream interpretations and I was thinking like, man, I got to do a video on this. <laughs> but I wanted to get like a little bit more information from the Lord before I actually did um, a thorough video. And um, my binder is actually in my storage told I don't feel like getting it out, y'all. All my notes is in there. I just asked the Holy Spirit to bring to my remembrance, you know, anything I may um, not have at the top of my head. But yes. A man can have the Jezebel spirit and it's kind of tricky because the premise of the Lord giving me this teaching and revelation is because I have these two witchcraft spirits operating in my life and the way the Lord has always shown them to me they take many different forms in my dreams sometimes he'll show them to me as two sister spirits as two women who are um he gave them the names of chaos and confusion they have many different names but they're the same spirits and uh, they can shape shift they can take any kind of form so i've seen them as two sister spirits uh two women two female spirits and sister spirits in the sense that i believe that they're sister spirits because they work together and um you notice that uh <laughs> I was actually asking the Lord, I was like, Lord, is it just all Jezebel just in one or is it two different spirits? What he showed me personally in my dreams, in my personal encounters with these spirits in the spirit realm, I can definitely feel the difference between Jezebel. I know what's her because I'm very familiar with her and I know what's that dark, gothic, you know, that one's much, much darker than Jezebel. And um, so I believe the whole sister relationship with those spirits is due to they function together they're a unit so this is going to be such a deep teaching i'm trying to think how i can do this without notes they do work together they're two different spirits they're not just one spirit uh, or one spirit but they're one unit so in a sense when you and it, is, it doesn't have to always be a male and a female it can be two females just like i said i see two i've seen two sister spirits it could be two best friends two females it can be two males it can be a male and a female it can be more than two people but the traditional way these spirits these particular spirits operate and i wouldn't even say that that Ahab spirit it's not just Ahab I don't even think the Jezebel spirit can just go by Jezebel to be honest with you I think Delilah probably had that spirit and maybe a different kind of principality as well but my personal experience and encounter with these two witchcraft familiar spirits in my life I've definitely noticed the dark witchcraft spirit to be Ahab rejection I think that one may be rejection too and I'm going by discernment what I felt the experience with them and um what is the third one I would call that spirit? Uh, it, it's a tricky one, man. That it's, it's much darker than Jezebel. I've, I've felt it so many times. Anytime I encounter these spirits, when it comes over me, it's such a, it's a deep depression. I mean, if, if any of y'all have ever seen my older vlogs on my older channel when I used to like cry and stuff, like it was that spirit I was dealing with. And um, that I believe came into my life uh, when I got into the occult when I was younger. But it's just always been those two spirits. The Lord has always shown me some some dreams i've had if i'm submitted to those spirits in some way they'll come to me as familiar spirits really comfortable and friendly and open with me and i've actually seen her as a female so for i kind of believe that she's a female spirit <laughs> to be honest with you but there's so much we have to learn the spirit of god you know i wouldn't be surprised if demons can literally shape shift into anything i mean you never really know if they're male or female predominantly female you know i've never seen jezebel as a male figure i've always seen her in a, as a female form Anytime she's threatened me, anytime I've seen her in the spirit, anything, any dream I've had, any type of symbols or, or people that the Lord has used to represent the spirit has always been female. So, um, when I was interpreting that dream, the Holy Spirit was giving me the revelation about how they function together. I was kind of confused because I was like, he gave me the, um, he gave me the character of the witch from Snow White. Because I noticed that in some of my dreams... When I'm not submitted to that spirit, they're both around. But when I am submitted to Jezebel, it's like they're just one unit. And I find that very odd. I was like, Lord, 
I said, okay. <laughs> you know, because the, the symbols that he uses are people who are um, familiar people in my life, like ex-best friends and stuff like that, to represent the spirits in my dreams. So, um, I noticed that in the beginning of one particular scene in this uh, in this particular dream, it was two, it, they were like the sister spirits at first. Didn't recognize them, but I could recognize their uh, facial features that I've seen uh, in my dreams before. And that's before they ensnared me in the dream but after I got you know resubmitted to them reinstated covenant with the Jezebel spirit it was just my ex-best friend that was there to represent both of them so I was asking the Lord I was like okay is it all just Jezebel is she able to like you know dis disassemble herself or is it multiple spirits working together and I think I've kind of come to the conclusion I don't think he would just show me two people he's always showing two people to represent those two spirits and he's always told me that Jezebel and rejection run together. Jezebel and Ahab run together. Chaos and confusion. They are, these are two spirits of witchcraft. They are destructive spirits. They ain't nothing to play with. I've been teaching on, on Jezebel, like on my channel, for a very long time. And, you know, people in churches think that Jezebel is just something as simple as a woman with a loud mouth. I've had people try to correct me about, oh, you know, you talk about Jezebel so much, but it's so obvious to see who has. I said, honey, you don't even know anything about this spirit. Have you had encounters with her? Have you spoken with her? Have you had her threaten you in your life? You don't know anything about this demon. It's not just a loud mouth, sassy woman. That's, that's so minute to what this spirit fully encompasses. This is a principality spirit, a dark witchcraft spirit. And when I say witchcraft, I'm just saying witchcraft as a category of the many different branches of witchcraft from gossip, slander, backbiting, mind control. I mean, every kind of witchcraft you could possibly think about that you haven't even learned about in the Spirit of God yet. So I've come to the conclusion, I do think it's two separate entities because when I experience them in the spirit realm um, or when I get oppressed, I can feel... There's a difference. I know what's Jezebel and what's that spirit. Because that spirit's much darker and much stronger than her. That's not her at all. I think they work together. And I think the reason why the Lord shall be my ex-best friend um, to represent Jezebel back alongside me after I reinstated Covenant in that particular dream, I knew that she represented the Jezebel spirit because me and her both dealt with the same bondage. And she's in bondage to Jezebel as well. She's not saved. And um, me and her also got into the occult at the same time together. So she represented both entities. So I think that in a weird way, they are two different spirits. They function the same way, but they have different roles. It's kind of like, uh, let's say what we typically know Jezebel to be. I'm going to get a little bit into this in a minute. A very overbearing, dramatic uh sneaky mischievous trifling um more so of an overt personality jezebel would be deemed ahab or the dark witchcraft spirit that's working alongside her is more covert you know what i'm saying so it's not the it's kind of like they're two different entities but they're almost so closely in nature to the point where you almost can't really tell them apart because they function the same way, but just in uh, same nature, but different formats of how they go about, you know, doing their witchcraft and doing their operations and stuff, whatever tactics they use. So I think that uh, my one friend represented them working together as a unit. If they need to separate and boomerang off of each other to get to, uh, to get to the individual, whoever they're trying to pursue, whoever their assignment is after, they'll do that. I think once they have you, they have the capability of also being so closely interwoven together, these two spirits, to where you have a force to be reckoned with if you have an individual who's dealing with both of those spirits together. Now, um, now the revelation that the Lord started giving me about Ahab, which blew my mind, <laughs> I was not expecting that. Um, he always uses these two individuals to uh, represent these two witchcraft spirits. And... I know them personally so he told me to start breaking down what I know about their personality and how they were treating me in the dream what I noticed about the female was a male and a female what I noticed about the female was that she had no problem really showing me how she felt about me she didn't have a problem letting me know she didn't like me she had a very uh, like a smirk on her face very mischievous very sneaky like she had something up her sleeve but she wasn't gonna say anything to you and I noticed the guy they came in together they always work together they're best friends okay 
the guy spoke to me he was nice uh very you know appearing to be friendly it would make you think that oh this is the one who's your friend <laughs> you know he's nice he's speaking to you you know doesn't seem to have a problem with you and she's obviously the mean one and um you need the spirit of discernment and revelation when you're interpreting dreams because if you just take everything at face value you, you would just interpret like oh okay well i can trust him can't trust her no <laughs> me and the lord started going over that dream together and uh i forgot what it was that was so significant about um that the holy spirit uses the foundation and just build upon it but basically he's telling me when it comes to those two witchcraft spirits, uh, to answer your question, does a, can a man have Jezebel? Yes, because, and I, I, I want to speak from like the uh, the position of like a marriage. Let's say you have a married couple, a husband and a wife. I don't believe, and I, I'm not saying this is every single marriage. Because I understand there's some Christian marriages that are unequally yoked. I'm not saying that every person who has a spouse with the Jezebel spirit is guilty as well. But nine times out of ten, if you have a husband who is a narcissist or he has he's carrying a Jezebel spirit, trust me, his wife has that spirit too. I know I know you may be thinking like you you know, <laughs> trust me, they have that spirit. It's just that one is covert. And one is a over Jezebel. They boomerang off of each other. A man can have Jezebel because these two witchcraft spirits, they're so similar in nature, Jezebel and Ahab. They're so similar in nature to where you can't really tell the difference between the two, but they're able to go back and forth from each individual. So you, you can't really tell who's the true culprit if you're just looking at the person because you're paying attention to what they're doing and their behavior and like their tactics when the Lord basically told me about the guy. He's sneaky too. You need to watch. That's the one you need to watch out for. The one who has the nice face. And that's when he was bringing up the Snow White Queen character to me. Um, he told me, he said, Brandy, um, Snow White, the queen. First she was a queen, right? Who hated Snow White. But in order to go deceive her and to ensnare her, she had to put on a different appearance. A more friendly face. Or a face that Snow White would yield to in naivety. Which was a witch. She looked like a witch. I don't know why Snow White didn't recognize the lady as a witch. She looked like an old haggard woman. If you watch the cartoon, she was an old lady. So, um, this spirit... Literally, I think the movie... Movies like that are so prophetic. You'll be surprised what the Holy Spirit can teach you through movies. <laughs> it's crazy. The Queen, Snow White's stepmother... I'm talking about the cartoon, the Disney cartoon. Not all the other, you know... Um... You know, re of the movie... The queen herself, in her full character, in her robe, you know, in her in her authority, you know, Jezebel was a queen, so she is she would be like the true essence, the true image of what Jezebel is. But in order to deceive, Jezebel has to shape shift. She has to take form. She has to change her face. This is why you, uh, people say that women who have the Jezebel spirit are two faced. They are two faced. It's a personality disorder. It's an altar. These women have demonic altars. People who are in bondage to Jezebel, they are split. There's soul fragmentation that takes place. And no, it's not just women. It's men too. Um, they have different faces. You know, we, we pass it off as just somebody being two-faced or, you know, oh, they're just fake. They're just superficial. When these people are actually split in the personality, whether they acknowledge that, know that or not, they completely are. But um, she had to transform herself into a witch. Or an old lady. She looked like a witch. But she was an old lady to go and deceive Snow White. And I find it very interesting that the old lady resembled so much the dark, familiar witchcraft spirit I always see. Which is why I was like, Lord, is it the same one? Or is it two different ones, you know? And uh, they're interchangeable. They're in you're dealing with two spirits, but they're very interchangeable. And um, I'm trying to think of how I can explain this. Um... Jezebel and Ahab. Yeah, the Lord was just more so speaking from the perspective of telling me to pay attention because the way these spirits operate, they'll have these individuals. Let's, let's just say it is two. It could be more than two people. It doesn't always have to be two, okay? So don't even get deceived by that because they'll use the person who you think can't be used, okay? Let's just say it is those two, both cold, covert and overt, you know, Jezebels. An overt Jezebel is somebody who's obviously 
a Jezebel. You know, their character, their demeanor, the way they carry themselves, they're bossy, they're very loud, they have no problem being ugly to you. These are the people that are blatantly showing you the attributes of the Jezebel spirit that you've learned about. You can, which means that you, you will expect treachery from them. You'll expect all the negative things about a narcissist or about the Jezebel spirit from that individual because she's overt or he's overt. A covert Jezebel is the main person who you would never ever in your life think had this spirit. I kid you not. You will this is this is a person as sweet. They look like they're such a humble sister in the Lord and they're just so nice and they're harmless. They don't ever get into any trouble. <laughs> and this is why Christians need a spirit of discernment because Jezebel is not stupid. Jezebel gets your eye on the bait. And then she'll hit you from the back end. Anytime you get a witchcraft attack from that spirit, it's always unexpected. I've experienced it so many times. Any witchcraft attack I've gotten, whether it was slander or something else, it came out of nowhere. So she has to get your attention on something else to distract you. And when it comes to the unit of the people that she's using, because it's two spirits in the spirit room, but they have to find vessels here. When it comes to the person that they're using, they wanna they wanna have your eyes on the individual that you are, you know, more most likely is gonna come from them. They're the problem. They're the problem person. And it's true, they are. What you don't know is Jezebel has a little sidekick, which is that other dark witchcraft spirit operating through the person that you think is innocent, the person that you think is your friend. They're so sweet, they have your back, you can go confide in them. And that's the covert Jezebel, or some, some people say the covert narcissist. Narcissism is the Jezebel spirit. But um, they're covert. Covert meaning this witchcraft spirit operating through them is able to manipulate and do so in such a very strategic and private way. You would never, you would never pick it up unless you had a spirit of discernment on you. And it, it can just be subtle things like they could be seed planters of gossip in, in, a, in such a very innocent way. They have, a, they have a way of going and trickling and going to different people and, you know, planning certain things about you or saying certain things. Or they may just have some ways about them. They know how to really uh, strategically manipulate behind the scenes, but not to a point where you'll see them get their hands dirty. If anything, if any chaos, you know... Um, ensues any chaos or any type of drama anything bad that happens that person is actually at the core of that situation but because they're so sweet they have the, the nice face of Jezebel they don't have the obvious overt characteristics of somebody carrying that spirit so nobody's gonna look at them and another thing that this uh, covert Jezebel does is she controls the overt Jezebel now I want to say this it doesn't mean that the overt Jezebel, the dramatic one, is always being subtly controlled because they are working together. So, sometimes it could be these people do have an understanding of what's going on and they're in full agreement that I'll be the overt dramatic one. Not saying that they'll actually discuss, hey, they could. <laughs> you could have a wicked couple who doesn't mind talking like, they probably do talk like that. But... They don't mind being the one to be bossy and go bully at you at school while the other friend just kind of stands in the background. She's probably the one that started the mess the whole time, but she's not going to be the one to actually carry it out. And that's where Jezebel and Ahab comes into play. Anytime I thought about Ahab while we read about Ahab, I'm sure the church, you know, agrees. We always thought Ahab was just a cowardly male. We always think like, oh, Ahab just is a feminine guy. It's somebody who's weak without a backbone uh, because that's what Ahab displayed, you know, when it came to Jezebel and letting her reign. Somebody who doesn't want to walk in their authority, maybe a lazy crybaby man. Somebody who's weak, basically, not a real man. And the Lord told me that's why that witchcraft spirit is able to be successful in what she does when it comes to using Jezebel and Ahab characters in the earth realm because nobody's looking at Ahab and what he's doing. They're looking at her. And it's true that she is, uh, she, she's the face of Ahab. Listen to this. Ahab surrendered. This individual in the earth room, whoever these people are, they surrendered their spiritual authority and responsibility to the overt Jezebel. But it does not mean that they released control. They pull the strings through that one. So it can still be their mind, it can still be their ideas, even if they don't communicate that to the overt Jezebel. 
they're the the covert Jezebel, the quiet, nice one, the one that they'll smile, you know, be friendly to you. They're the ones that'll sit back like, well, you know, I don't really like, you know, whoever the characters are in the situation, you know. I don't really like the people in this situation. Don't really too much care for them. I, I wouldn't mind if she left, to be honest with you. So I'm going to go ahead and let, uh, you know, Tiffany handle that. In their mind. <laughs> so the witchcraft spirit, it, it's a mental witchcraft. This spirit knows how to operate through a psychology in the mind of the covert Jezebel, the one that's quiet. So they have a way. And sometimes these people, I don't even think they know. People, for the most part, probably don't even know they're being used by these spirits to that degree. And um, they don't always have to vocally communicate that to their sidekick, you know, Jezebel friend, the more overt, dramatic one. I think that when people carry these corresponding spirits, I think there's a strange, weird, like, synchronous spiritual understanding between them to where they function together regardless. You don't have to tell them, hey, I don't like this person, I don't want to handle this, I'm going to let you do it, <laughs> you know, but that's, that's what's going through their mind. They're scheming. It's a constant scheming and plotting. These two... Uh, individuals as a unit are conspiracy it's constant conspiracy and just witchcraft so they ahab hasn't necessarily he's not removed from the picture just because he's not the one in the front that you see ahab the covert jezebel is in the background handling things and scheming behind the scenes but he doesn't want he doesn't want to be noticed for being the culprit of anything that's taking place. He doesn't want his hands dirty. So he'll be quiet. And he'll trust me, these people will be darn careful. <laughs> they will be careful to make sure everybody a part of that situation sees her or sees the covert Jezebel. And they remain innocent. They won't get involved. But it's their mind. And it's their spirit and their plans and their ideas and their manipulation behind it. And there's various different forms of manipulation. But if you don't know this spirit and you don't know what the heck is happening to you, you get attacked by this spirit, you're like, what the heck is going on? You know, who are you going to run to? The covert Jezebel. <laughs> Freaking snakes, man. You're going to run to the one you think is nice, not knowing. Neither of them like you. Neither They never liked you. They're both against you. They're a unit. I've been in situations like this in work atmospheres and just personal people that I've met and the Lord will tell me after the fact what happened to me. I can't stand being played by people like the Lord wait until after because I have to learn the lesson. Um, and I was just like, I said, Lord, I said, her? I was like, him? I said, I said, I don't believe that God. Like the Lord had to embed it in me and expose these people to me. Like he had to um, give me dream after dream after dream, thoroughly exposing these people's hearts to me. I never saw it. You trust me, a covert Jezebel, you will never see it coming. These people play mind games like they are so strategic and smart. They will slip right <laughs> under your nose and strip you and rob you of whatever that glory was in that witchcraft attack. And you won't even see it. They were the culprit until like five years later. Like the Lord will have to break down this person's mentality to you layer by layer by layer. But um, that's usually the person that you run to not knowing that they're all a part of this conspiracy against you together. And uh, I just questioned myself. I said, Lord, do these people know how wicked they are? The covert ones. Because I just don't see how you can have a mindset constantly conspiring like this. And constantly manipulating, you know, and just constantly controlling in a very subtle and quiet manner in a way that's never, ever going to be a tangible, you know, exposure. Like, uh, they're never going to do anything that you could use to, like, accuse them. You can't bring any accusation up against them because you don't have any proof. They're never going to let, there's not going to be ever any evidence with a covert Jezebel. They will be issuing their supply and their agenda through the overt Jezebel, the dramatic one. Now, they're guilty, too. They're in on it. But what I've noticed about Jezebel is she always has backup reinforcements and different characters in whatever witchcraft attack or plot she's doing. And it's she has one up on us if we just look at one person. Instead of the Holy Spirit revealing to us everybody who's involved. So, um, yeah, the Lord told me Ahab is not some cowardly man. And that's why he's sneaky. People think that Ahab was a cowardly, weak man in that he was crying. No, Ahab was a manipulator. He was smart. I don't want to get my hands dirty, so I'm going to let her do it and enjoy just kick back in the, <laughs> in the background, you know? I'm going to let her do all the dirty work, even though I'm a part of this too, and I'm in full agreement. 
and this this could carry out in so many different situations i mean i'm gonna just let y'all's imagination go wild with how many different occurrences this or situations this could take place in whether it's a guy or a female if they're fully aware of what's going on that the situation could be detrimental to their character or to their reputation or maybe to their marriage or something they'll let the overt jezebel because they you, you can't function with somebody like that the word says that two cannot walk together unless they be agreed these people if you're if you're friends with somebody you're in agree there's some agreement within you i'm not talking about ideas and sharing beliefs i'm talking about spirits spirits everything starts in the spirit first your spirit is agreeing with that person what I've seen, the dynamic I've seen when it comes to Jezebel and Ahab working together, it can be, a, it's always a homosexual male with a just an overt Jezebel female. Somebody has a more a mischievous character, a personality. Um, so that would be my first, um, I guess, second answer to your question, can a man have Jezebel? The main men that you'll see with Jezebel are gay men. That is Jezebel. She's the spirit of perversion. Um, this spirit is able to operate effectively 100% full throttle through gay men. She already has them. They're completely bound. If not completely defiled, they just turned over and reprobate. Um, these men, um, homosexual men do have Jezebel, but they can also be co both covert and overt. And we can just see that from like their personalities. You know, they're naturally very messy. They love drama, <laughs> okay? But they can also be covert. Go where people are just very sneaky. They just do all their scheming quietly is basically just what that means. And um, it's never going to be in a way where uh, the natural eye can catch it because this person is not going to have the type of characteristics that you're looking for them to have to be capable of doing something wicked like this. They're very, you've always known them to be nice, you know, <laughs> so sweet to you. And you never knew the whole time they were scheming in plotting on how to tear you down or if it wasn't a tear you down let, let's say it's a guy who just who just wanted to have sex with you okay and he's a male jezebel he would never ever let you on to any idea that that's all he wanted from you that he never had your best interest at heart he never really cared about you he used so many different manipulation tactics of false kindness the lord has been dealing with me and jezebel about false kindness for a long time they have different faces and uh, when it comes to the two spirits working together, there's, there's, there are individuals who can have both of these witchcraft spirits operating through them as one individual, which is why they have two different faces. Jezebel uses whatever face is necessary in order to catch her bait. If I have to be nice to you and you know give you some good game and some good verbal play, and I'll be your, I'll do all the right things that you know a, a seemingly genuine person would do, when in reality, in the back. In the back of their mind, that that back personality that's not that's sitting on the bench, you know, not playing in the game right now, is that dark witchcraft spirit. They're constantly scheming and conspiring in their minds, like you know, they're probably laughing, like this girl is so stupid, you know, <laughs> like you really don't know that I'm literally just you know about to ensnare you. Right, they're a wolf in sheep's clothing. So this, there's some individuals who can have both spirits operating through them, and that's the most dangerous ones. Women too so and that these are usually individuals once uh, once they get what they want or once the mission is accomplished so to speak the other face comes and that's when they drop you <laughs> they drop you or they uh you, you basically you start to see their true color so to speak and um they're completely schizophrenic individuals these people are just i mean everybody's split to some degree i personally feel for you to have spirits operating through you like that you got to be split but um they always knew what they were doing um so yeah she used a different face but the lord told me ahab he's not this weak cowardly male you know and that's what makes him so dangerous the lord even told me ahab's more dangerous than jezebel is because because of his power of deceit he's a skilled de uh, deceiver ahab wants you to think that he's weak and that he's cowardly because you're not going to judge him you're not going to think that he could possibly be the guilty one because look, I gave all my authority and my power to her. She's the one in charge, you know, and uh, she gets everything. You see how he wanted Naboth's venue. Nobody catches this. Ahab had a dark witchcraft spirit operating through him. That was not no weak, cowardly man. The man was wicked. He was wicked as 
heck he was wicked as h-e double i he's this i mean i want you to think of a, uh, somebody who you know who's truly truly wicked i mean black hearted ahab had game that's what ahab had he was smart he knew what he wanted and he knew how to get it but he wasn't the one that got it himself he used a puppet to do it for him so he wasn't some weak cowardly husband you know who's scared of jezebel and oh i want naboth's finger but he won't give it to me you know that's probably that they have two different phases once again sometimes it could be a false sympathy face if, if you know these people they're conspiring you know warlocks if they're men and if it's a woman she's a witch you know and who's who's to know you never know ahab could have been conspiring against his own life because when you have individuals operating in these two spirits and they have corresponding demons that's working together these spirits are not loyal these are not loyal characters we're talking about you know these individuals don't have real friends they don't care about people like that so i don't i don't think that ahab or jezebel ever cared about each other period i think that they both were boomerang or they were both benefiting from one another um they were both each other's narcissistic supply, so to speak. Ahab saw it as, even if he never told her this, he never told Queen Jezebel this. All right, I see that, you know, uh, she can do my dirty work for me. <laughs> Basically, you know, I can stay a king. I can stay in my spot. I can get what I want. And she benefits as well because she's like, all right, well, he can stay in the background. I can get what I want. I want this throne. I want the power and the control not knowing that she herself is being controlled so you see how witchcraft always backfires it's stupid for individuals who are operating in spirits like this because witchcraft is naturally designed to work against you the lord said you will reap what you sow you cannot yield to entities like this or walk in characteristics like this and nature not you know wreak havoc against you for what you're doing so she thinks these the, the jezebel uh, the overt jezebel the one who's in the front it's completely delusional. These people are the ones, they're, they're in so much control about the situation, you know, they're controlling Ahab, they're controlling the guy who's involved with it. They think they got everybody just ensnared, they're running the show, not realizing that he's playing you. Y'all both doing the same thing to each other, like y'all both got that same demon. He's not going to tell you that because he's the covert Jezebel. In order for him to maintain his face, you know, his disguise, and how he wants you to continue thinking the way he is to maintain his control over you and for things to continue operating the way he's comfortable with he don't have no problem wearing that face ahab will let you think he's weak and a coward and all the all the things that he, he can have the whole family talking about him he does not care because he knows that as long as nobody knows what my true personality is my true mind is i can continue controlling this game right here so they're both delusional individuals Jezebel plays herself because this is usually the individual who's like running full force in a spirit of witchcraft. They want full control. Like they want domination. Okay. And it's working against them at the same time because there's always going to be an Ahab coalition, you know, situation where the Ahab, the covert one, is really the one controlling them. You're just the hands for the Ahab. So you're really not in control of anything. You're getting played. I've had this dynamic in uh, relationships with guys before the Lord had to reveal it to me, you know, and I'm sitting here apologizing to the guy and I'm just feeling so bad for being a manipulator and the Lord had to reveal to me, well, he was manipulating you too. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit just told me, he said, he said, uh, he said, that's why you don't operate in a spirit of witchcraft. That spirit is playing both of the human vessels that are in agreement with the spirit itself. Demons are not loyal to anybody. They don't care about you. They will use you, marry y'all together, or if it's if it's not a marriage with y'all, they'll just put y'all together as a unit and have y'all both operating in that spirit while at the same time, y'all are both in bondage to the spirit itself and they're using you for their agenda. And then you end up getting hurt like, oh my God, they deceived me. How could they lie to me, you know, like that, even though you were doing the same thing to them, <laughs> you know, but you didn't know that they were doing that. But it's like, what did you expect? You were walking in a spirit of witchcraft. You reap what you sow. You deserved it. You just didn't know that they were a covert little Jezebel, you know. You thought she was running the show and controlling things and being this hot mama, seductive, you know, uh, woman, <laughs> whatever you were doing. And uh, he wasn't going to let you see that. Or sometimes the roles can be reversed with the man and the woman too. So 
big mistake, people. Big mistake. I don't know if anybody's taught about it yet when it comes to Jezebel and Ahab. Ahab is not a weak, cowardly man. That is a mask that these individuals wear to mask and veil the true demonic spirit networking within them. Because if you even thought for a second or even saw the power that they're really capable of doing to you, or how much control and damage they can really do, you know, then they wouldn't have that. Their control would be weakened. They'd be exposed. They don't want to be exposed. Jezebel doesn't want to be exposed regardless of who she's operating through. They don't want to be exposed. This is why they hide behind a lot of different faces, a lot of different uh, forms of manipulation, witchcraft tactics, uh, relate people. They need to have people as like backup reinforcements, uh, narcissism, teachers, they call them flying monkeys. They need to have individuals to distract you so you look at them first. You're going to judge the culprit of who's responsible through behavioral, you know, um, outbursts of uh, who started the problem and who were the main, you know, people really creating the chaos and the confusion. You're not going to look at Ahab. Ahab is innocent. He's just a nice guy. What are you talking about? He would never do anything like that. He's a perfect father. He's a perfect husband. He's such a great friend. Anytime I need something, he's there for me. Like... Yeah, so these people, they're always going to have individuals around them. The individuals don't even know that they're their puppets. <laughs> I mean, you people, we have to walk in a spirit of discernment. The Holy Spirit literally has to reveal and affirm and approve each relationship you choose to have in this walk. It can be a brother or a sister in Christ who has this kind of spirit networking through them and they may not fully realize it because they have a stronghold in place of where and it's not for us to hate the individual or to you know um you know just toss away the brother or the sister in christ but pay attention to if you have a demonic spirit that's pursuing you and it's scanning and it's making you its target and it can use that brother or that sister in christ then you need to operate in wisdom you need to remove yourself from that relationship because it's not so much about the brother or the sister and what they're doing, but that spear through them knows what it's doing. And if they're fully capable of using this person, you may have already experienced an attack from them. I, I need to go. <laughs> I need to, you know, get back, you know. So, um, no, nah, he ain't weak. Ahab is not weak. He's not a coward. That's his, that's one of his many faces. Um, and Ahab has a lot of different faces. Any face that will deflect your attention from him is what he will wear. These people will be just fine with you thinking that they are a certain way as long as you never find out that they were the main ones conspiring and um, starting or creating this manipulation witchcraft that is taking place. They are literally the reins, okay, the king behind this uh, scheming in this system of witchcraft through the 20 and 50 hundred individuals that are involved doing the dirty work for them so um that's what the lord told me about jezebel and ahab he said ahab is more wicked and this 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 actually has to be revealed through a spirit of revelation when you're reading the story about Jezebel and Ahab because you're not going to see it just biblically like the Lord had to teach it to me to me through a dream interpretation so I didn't even get it from scripture but he was pointing back to scripture as he was teaching me and I was like what the heck like nobody saw that like we know that Ahab was wicked but I don't think anybody ever really catches like the true manipulation that the man had at the core of this entire scenario um so yeah he was definitely a wicked king but uh to answer your question you know, everybody just wants to focus attention on queen jezebel the woman it's the woman who's the jezebel no they're a married couple honey i mean put two and two together they're a married couple they're scheming against you together they're not stupid these individuals are not stupid so, um, and I actually recently saw this dynamic with another married couple on YouTube. <laughs> the Lord recently revealed it to me. I'm not going to say who they were, but everybody thinks that this sister is so innocent and she's not, <laughs> she's not at all. Um, you know, like I said, they, they wear the nice face and everybody just targets the, um, the individual who's an obvious, obnoxious, rude, ugly, you know, uh, controlling, domineering, aggressive personality. 
and uh, or the wife is always the innocent one she's the fragile one that needs the help you know same thing you see that's why I said the spirits they boomerang off of each other they're interchangeable because sometimes the woman can be operating in the Ahab spirit because they're both submitted to the witchcraft spirits so that means that both of these spirits can operate through both the male and the female at any given time so sometimes she can have the Ahab spirit which is really Jezebel but she's a covert one so if she's covert, she's Ahab. If she's overt, it's more so the Jezebel spirit. So she's the one that's the damsel in distress. I need so much help on being abused. Oh, it's such a horrible marriage, <laughs> you know. But if you were to look a little bit more into that situation and see a little bit deeper, you'd notice that if she's not just like her husband, they carry the same characteristics and attributes as the main person in the marriage that's being targeted and hanged I kid you not they're not innocent not innocent by a long shot uh, these people need deliverance whoever's in a situation like that to be honest like it's all over the world these units all over the world I've seen them paired up as a homosexual male and a female best friend so many times and that that's the main um, the spirit pay attention to how spirits uh like to work or pay attention to different characters bible characters that are um used in scripture it shows you how demons like to operate so like how queen and king jezebel were you know a king and a queen they were male and female they were a married couple so these spirits are going to be looking for hosts like that if they can't get anything close to a marriage to continue their agenda the way they did long ago in ancient days They'll find individuals who are close enough, like kindred spirits, best friends. It's 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 close enough to it's almost like a marriage because you can be married to somebody in the spirit through a soul tie. So they don't have to be physically married. They can just be best friends, and they're one spirit together. They are one unit, a force to be reckoned with. The Lord told me that as well. He said Jezebel and the witchcraft spirit Ahab. Ahab has different names. It's not just Jezebel. I mean, it's not just Ahab. They can work individually, but they're stronger together. So, these individuals, they can do their manipulation. They can do their petty, you know, just whatever they're doing. But when they're together, oh, man, it's going to be a mind game for you, uh, the victim, the target, because you're not going to know which one is trustworthy because the spirits are boomeranging from the, the, the overt, <laughs> you know, the covert Jezebel back to the overt one. And they'll do this cycle with you, this mind game cycle. Like one minute one of them like you, and then the next one's acting funny with you. But then the next one is like, no, I always cared about you. This is the real friend. And then you look, it's just like, who, which one can I trust? <laughs> you know, like, I thought, you know, me and this one had an epiphany together. We had, you know, we had understanding. And then this one is just really like, the, you know, the, the, um, the enemy. You know, they're the culprit. And it's like, honey, they're both the culprit. A spirit's playing with you. It's literally going from like, it's 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 a psychological bondage. Jezebel has to build up a psychological stronghold in the people that she's using. These people can operate like this and not even know what spirits are using them. They could be completely submitted and fully taken over by these demons and not know anything about it. They'll just think it's just their personality. So you have to be careful when you're dealing with uh, the unit of Jezebel and Ahab because one of the, the biggest trap that she will use to ensnare you is your trust, gaining your trust and getting your heart arrested and ensnared, a trap through you trusting the covert Jezebel, the nice one, the one who, or maybe not even nice to you, it could just be somebody who's, not, who's neither, they could be neutral, they could be neutral in a situation, they could be the quiet one. But you basically somebody that you don't think is a threat. But they the main one cataloging all the information and scheming and conspiring. And then they're gonna create that backlash of an explosion. And who you gonna look at when it happens? The covert Jezebels. Because you never really talk to the the you know, not the covert, the overt ones. You never really talk to the covert one. He's quiet, he don't really bother you too much. He's you know, just seem like a laid back type of dude. <laughs> He's laid back for a reason. He's scheming. <laughs> they're scheming against you. That's why they're quiet. These pe I've noticed that with these people, they're very shut off individuals. You ever notice that? When it comes to a male Jezebel, uh, not a male Jezebel, but uh, 
overt Jezebels. They're um very quiet, uh, calculated or very um, laid back type of people. Like they don't really say too much, or they're shut off and they uh, they don't really let you see a lot of who they are. They're always um, concealing themselves. And I, although I do believe that there's a time and a place to do that. I'm not saying like just pour your heart out to everybody don't just give all your all to everybody I mean the people that's a privilege you know um, that's my personality so I'm just like that naturally <laughs> but I've noticed that not saying everybody who does that is a Jezebel but if you are dealing with a covert Jezebel they are personality types like that it's because they are being careful not to reveal they're giving you enough to get you to trust them get you to befriend them they're giving you enough um, to make you think that they are a natural person with a conscience okay but they're not going to reveal too much of who they are so that you can be able to discern and kind of explore or discover their weaknesses because that's going to pull the plugs off of their manipulation and how they want to control the people in their lives or their relationships and whatever else they're controlling so they're always going to be people that are kind of like ducked off or they just kind of not really quiet just uh a personality type that's very it's just a very unrevealing um, not open and um, not vulnerable kind of numb a little bit okay people who are like that are like that for a reason you're either extremely shy extremely extroverted or you're a freaking manipulator <laughs> okay it's not normal it's it's we're human beings like we are designed to be vulnerable and to share in affection and intimacy and relationship engagement with other people it's not normal for you to have somebody who's that concealed you know it's kind of like what are you hiding like what was what is this you know like when I talk to you I don't really feel like a I don't you can you can feel it like you can feel when you talk to them if it's, if it's a friend of yours it's like they have a barrier it's just always a barrier between you and this person. Like, why aren't you really open with me? You know, we've been talking for, you know, such and so, you know, long time. Or if they're in a relationship with somebody, you know, why aren't you really, you know, I don't feel like you're really open to me. You know, I don't feel that flow of just vulnerability with you. I feel like you're still like, you know, just shut off or you got to bury up with me and got a wall up. It's for a reason. Um, and this goes back to the video 